Hello, and thanks for tuning in. Uh, today's show, Conversations with Cheryl Weston, and my topic for today is the Omaha City Council election showdown. And I thought it was kind of appropriate because I was thinking of how they have like the showdown at the OK Corral and uh, all of this that's been following up with uh, coming behind the heels of the um, removal of uh, Vice President Benny Palmero. And so I thought, you know what, let's find out the facts. What's going on here? We've been following it. So today, that's what I want to go into. And um, so I have some things that we've prepared for it. Um, and the reason why this is occurring is because due to the city council formally removing council members Benny Polero from District 4 as vice president of the Omaha City Council, which they didn't really have to do. So this is all a self-promoting um, activity because if the city council of Omaha would have allowed the process to continue to go through, um, there would be no need for this because Benny's term, two-year term, would officially have ended on June 6, 2023, which is Tuesday. And then there would be a new election which would be held. And that election would be to fill the positions of president and vice president of the Omaha City Council. These two items are listed on the Omaha City Council uh, agenda, items 61 and 62. So let's take and go back in history. What happened here? Well, we know that Mr. Polaro was arrested, indicted, and is currently in, uh, I believe, in Lincoln or one of the county jails there, somewhere in or near. However, on April 24th, 2023, council members Brinker Harding, Amy Melton, and Don Rowe requested a resolution for the May 2nd, 2023 city council uh, meeting to remove Benny uh, from the position as vice president because they cannot remove him from the office unless the criteria is met. And that is in our charter uh, of the city in section 205, which lists the removal from and forfeit of the office of city council. So in that item number five, if he would be absent from the regular council meetings for three consecutive calendar months without being excused by the council or Number six, which is absent from regular count, regular council meetings for six consecutive calendar months, regardless of whether the absence are excused. Well, we know he's not going to get number five, which is to get excused absence, and there's not a likelihood of getting number six. So, like I said, it really isn't, it wasn't necessary because June 6th, his two-year term would be up. And then July 23rd, the actual seat would become available again. And uh, we're going to be talking about it in another show um, about the recall process and let people know that what's what that is really all about and going on. But anyway, let's get back to this April 24th, um, 2023, Brinker Harding, Amy Melton, and Don Rowe requested for the resolution. So that means that the city count city county city attorneys um, would draft this resolution and all it was was to remove him from the position as vice president because the reason as Mr. Palmero was detained for an unseen for for a foreseeable future he's not going to be able to perform his duties according to um, councilman Harding therefore the council members all voted five to zero with council member Juanita Johnson abstaining in favor of the resolution. So they voted except for Ms. Johnson to remove him. And if anyone saw that meeting or saw the news, um, like I say, this, this was a show. <laughs> it was an actual show. So moving on, um, that the resolution came up 
And really, you know what this all came about? Let me tell you. Here's the part that a lot of people didn't know. At that particular time, the mayor was out of town. President Pete Festerson was planning to be out of town in the future. And therefore, if Denny was in jail, he's gone and the mayor's gone. Um, okay, who's going to take over? They didn't really tell that or explain that to the citizens of Omaha. And in the charter, what happens? If the mayor is out of town for five days or more, then guess what? The president takes over. Well, President Pete Festerson really had planned to be out of town and the words came out of his mouth, go back, look at the screen, look what he said, was his daughter um, was going to be in some sports activity. And I'm all in favor of parents being able to go and participate and watch what our children do. It's, it's really important. So that was his thing. So he didn't really want to have to be there, but he wanted to be there because he's looking at possible to be a mayor. So he wanted to be there, but this was more important. And there are times that our families, things and children, especially, it's much more important than some of those things such as um, president of the city council due to the fact that there is a process that could take place and the business of the city is going to continue right on. And this is really, they did not have to do that resolution in order to get this done because what would have happened if they did not do that resolution, the mayor's gone and then the president of the city council is gone. And then if we go to the city charter in section 208, if both of those are gone and absent for the city and are unable to preside over the council meetings to serve as acting mayor, the line of succession should be from the longest serving council member to the shortest serving council member. So what does that do, folks? That automatically would have put Amy Melton in to be the acting mayor. And there would have been no need, again, to make that resolution to let Vinny, uh, to remove Vinny from being vice president. And again, if we follow the process, allow the process to work, but because there was all these things in behind underlining of what that council wanted to do, they didn't want to follow that. They wanted to make like, oh, we are so up above. We are so transparent, all of this. And we need to have him removed as vice president and blah, 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 blah. So on April 27, 2023, Amy Melton became the acting as mayor. And it was on TV again. And it's also on, um, I'm sure, the city website. So this is what happened. Amy Melton, acting city mayor. The city council president, Pete Festerson, and the mayor are both out of town. Benny's in prison. So the show just keeps on going on and on and getting bigger. On May 2nd, 2023, the Omaha City Council did another grandstanding vote, five to one to remove Vinnie Palmero as vice president. Again, they did not have to do that, but because everything was in motion for their plan, you know, Brinker Harding, Roe, Melton, they all got it together. He wanted to do his thing and wanted this to go and look good. Um, so that's what happened. Palmero's term, they voted, passed the resolution. That's it. Casting the only vote against the resolution to remove Romero, Romero from his position, Council Member Johnson stated, I stand on fairness, equity, and due process. That's my very core, my very being. Voting yes would be against my moral compass. 
good to have some principles. And it's even better when you act upon the principles. But the saga didn't stop. It just keeps on giving, giving. And if anyone's watched the movie, um, The Tombstone, um, you can see it in that coming up and they're getting ready to go to fight. And, and all of a sudden, one says, oh, my God. Well, they use some other French words, but I'm not going to use that. But anyway, the saga continues. So let's continue on what happened. The saga councilwoman, council member Brinker Harding, he begins to take it up on himself. Now, remember, he's just a city council member. He is not the president of the city council. But he took it on himself to announce to the city and district four, you will not have council representation district four because he will come to the front. Shouldn't this have been coming from the city council president as to saying what the actions are going to be? Shouldn't Pete Festerson, who is the current president, shouldn't he have been the one to say, this is the process. This is what we're going to do. District four, you will have representation. But nope, nope, nope. He's not done yet. On May 26, again, Brinker Harding announces that he has arranged meetings with Ben Salazar, who is the director of Generation Diamond, to meet with Ben and four South Omaha leaders to address the issues of South O. Oops. Who is overseeing the city council? I mean, should this not have been the president of the city council stating this? Should he not have been the one to say, hey, this is what we're going to do? We want to make sure all the citizens, because you know, uh, Brinker does this, this isn't the first time, he does this multiple times when it comes in and he picks the times that he's not just a representative from his district, but he is a representative and concerned about all the districts in Omaha. I'm not going to say anything. I would say by these actions that Brinker has made is, whoa, I'm going to do this. This is what's going to happen. Could these be signs of Brinker Harding's future aspirations? Could we be looking at someone who wants to be mayor? Who knows? Only the shadow knows. So in response to, to this interview that WOWT made, um, they asked Council President Pete Festerson, let me write, reiterate, President Pete Festerson, if he would be participating in the weekly conference calls, because Harding has now said he set this up, Ben Salazar and four other leaders, Ben has chosen who those leaders are. He's going to have, they will have their meeting and then Brinker's going to get with them on Monday so that they can discuss what's on Tuesday. Um, hey, Pete. <gasps> He came back with the comment, said, I didn't say this. Go to the TV if you think I'm kidding. Councilman President Pete Festerson said, I have already been meeting with South Omaha leaders. Didn't say who, what leaders, and will be keep doing so. Again, oops, Pete, you might have been a little late. Maybe you should have been the one that jumped out there with that. So, Here's what we've got. Come Tuesday, they will hold item 61 and 62, president and vice president of the city council. What's going to take place? So I put together this little, this is just a little quick video um, that I'm calling the um, Omaha showdown of the Omaha City Council elections, June 6th. And let's see if we get this shared screen here. Okay. 
how come it always has technology problems? I don't know why. Okay. I think we're going to get it. Maybe not. Um, we'll try this way. Well, it worked before in rehearsal. Not sure why it's not worked. Whoa, magic. <laughs> anyway, here we go. Showdown at the Omaha City Council, June 6, 2023. What's going to happen? Well, we've got some non-players in this. It's definitely not going to be Juanita Johnson from District 2. It's not going to be Don Rowe from District 5. We can count them out. We know that's not going to be happening. Mm -mm. So what else might be happening? Key players for vice president might be Danny Bagley, District 3. Now, that's questionable. One thing, he's been on there a short period of time. And definitely wannabe Amy Melton. And why do I say she wants to be vice president? Guess what? If you were to go back to the, after the elections of swearing in and everything, and the next city council meeting that they had, she jumped herself up to seat next to where District 2 was supposed to be because she's on the end and complained, well, she's been on the end and she's been the last one um, for nine years. Well, guess what, Amy? You're supposed to be there because that's your district. It goes down the line to whoever's president, vice president, and then each district numerically is goes down the line. She wants to be. She's shown that she can be because several times she has served in the position as either president uh, of the city council. So she can handle vice president. No problem. She's got it. And then, like I say, she's a wannabe. So I would say she's got a good chance of being vice president. If here's the other possibility, the city council, according to the the city attorney, they can postpone this election. They can postpone this election until after July 23rd when that seat becomes available. That seat becomes available because Vinny will have missed his three consecutive months because he has no excused absence. And it's not looking real good that he's going to be out of jail in order to come back to the city council and he's already said he's not going to resign on his own so there is a recall out and like i say we'll be talking about that recall in next in our next um session but they could do that because they could have a vote one they could have a vote that it's going to be three three they can vote five times ten times how many ever times they want and if it keeps coming up be three three they can still, and they don't even have to do the 3-3. Three, three. They can automatically start it off and say, hey, we're going to postpone this to a later date or we can postpone it till after the 23rd when we know for sure that his seat's vacated. And here's what I think. You could hold that over because you have the right to do that. If you really wanted to be honest, transparent, and fair, and you really wanted to say you're doing the right thing because you're so concerned about District 4's representation, then why don't you let that process go through? And come July 23rd, you can say, hey, we're going to have the applications because the city council will decide who's going to take Vinny's place. They will have that in play. So whatever they come up with, whether it be like, okay, we're going to open it up. You have an, um, 30 days to get your application in, a resume to say you want to be, to fill that seat. 
then that city council will vote on who will take that place. Even if they had a recall, the recall is it's not timely enough. I think it's not enough time from when they got the vote or when they got the recall in time for Vinny to respond and then to secure 2,500 signatures is a lot of signatures. And so it's gonna be difficult for that to happen. But if they would just, they, meaning the city council, the current city council would just, hey, give it time, give the process time to work. If you really are being transparent, honest about what you're doing, but that's not most likely gonna happen knowing our city council. And then here, who are the key players for president? Mm, there we go. Key players for president. Pete Festerson, Rinker Hardy. Now he's a wannabe, but I don't think he really wants to be president because he can do so much now, just like the things that he's done. He can come out and what he's doing by then, hey, it's political game. He's showing the citizen of Omaha, I can be in charge. I can be have the initiative. This is what, I think he has higher aspirations. Maybe he doesn't. Maybe he wouldn't want to take the president of the city council. But if he wants to run for higher aspirations, he wouldn't take that. Who knows? So what we've got, as I said, we don't have, we don't have to worry about the non-players. Those are out of the picture. Well, I shouldn't say they're out of the picture, but let's just say 99.9%, .9 they're most likely out of the picture. Um, president, like I say, vice president. Ah, Amy is a shoe in I think. I think Danny would go along with it and accept that. He hasn't been there that long. So I could see the vote coming up um four or five to one she would get to be vice president it's not going to make any difference as they they will say whether we take and become get a vice president elected now or a president elected that's the thing um so i think that's going to be the secure and i think that's around that pete festerson will be re-elected to be president of the city council, Omaha City Council. So, hey, I'd like to know, what do you think? Who do you think? Maybe we're all fakes. Maybe they will take in and say, wait, let's postpone this. Let's get somebody in to be in District 4. Um, who knows? But Tuesday and item 6162 is at the end, towards the end of the meeting. Therefore, you know, people are going to be tired in their watch, or some people might just say, well, hey, I won't miss the first part because ain't nothing happening on the agenda, and I'm going to tune in for the last part. I don't know. But I like to be able to keep people up on this. There's some people say, well, who cares? We should all care. We should have learned by now who we elect and put into these positions makes a difference on our lives. It makes a difference on our pocketbook. It makes a difference. So that's what we got for today. Um, you can catch this on the replay on um, YouTube channel. You can do that. We've got a conversations, Cheryl Weston. So if you go to youtube.com uh, with Cheryl, West, Cheryl Weston, the conversations with Cheryl Weston, you can get all of this again. So I hope you've enjoyed. And like I say, we will be following up and let you know what happened. And also, we wanted to let you know what more information we found out about the recall of Vinnie Plumero for District 4. So have a great evening, and we will see you tomorrow. Thank you for tuning in.